minutes of me actually seeing what's going on underneath, that's, that's what you're getting. So, you know, if I'm poking at rust, I've found a hole, that's it. So, yeah, I get, but yes, I did get a choice. I do ramble on as well a bit. Do I get anything exotic? Not in cars or just in general in life? <laughs> well, I can't tell you. Yeah, yeah, we get um, we get all kinds of cars coming coming through, literally all kind, all types of stuff, and we get stuff that you can you can only sweep into a bin, uh, to things that really just need a, a new new set of spark plugs and some tyres and uh, and a kick up the boot, and that, that's it. So all kinds of stuff, you know, Ferraris, Lambos, oh, lots of stuff, Aston Martins, DB5s, everything. Okay, so would that Cortina be a car too far? No, that's not at all. And besides that, it's just such a stunning looking car. Apparently it was originally silver, um, but to be honest, I prefer the orange. I like the orange with the red interior. It's a real, uh, it's a, it's, that's a real sort of like an Opal Fruits car, Starburst for those people who are younger. Um, so, you know, that's, uh, that, yeah, that's not a car too far. The car SOS? I don't know, I might be able to, might be able to sort of like push that one through. It would be, what, what I have to do is, uh, I have to, for the production company, because I've spent so much of their money over the past few years, um, if you consider it, I probably, by the end of this series, I'll have probably spent uh, about half a million pounds of their money, which, which I've not really noticed, but it's nice, nice to think about it like that. Not many people get to spend half a million quid of somebody else's money, do they? But, but um, I have to do. I have to give them uh, the cars on a scale of one to ten. Occasionally, you know, um, if they're really persuading, trying to persuade me to do a car that is far too much to, to do to take on, and I know that they'll get into trouble over it. I do sort of whack it up to eleven or even twelve. But they but um, generally speaking, um, the one to ten, we don't do ones and twos. We we, we start off on a three to four. That's the sort of that's the sort of easiest one I'll, I'll take. No, I, a three to four is generally a pre-war car because they're they're made to be rebuilt, they're made to be maintained, and they're made to be maintained by their owners. So even if you have to manufacture parts, you can normally get away with uh, an awful lot on a pre-war car because uh, they, they're not they're not as difficult as people think. Okay, so there may be things like uh, line boring and white metalling and bearings, etc. But it's not really any big deal. There's so many great services out there nowadays. You can get all this kind of stuff done relatively easily and, at, uh, and uh, more cost effectively as well nowadays. Um, but yeah, things like uh, if you consider the E Type Jaguar that we did, uh, I put that at about an eight to nine um, simply because uh, the, the, expense of the, the expense of doing it and the length of time that it was going to take to sort out things like the nose cone and stuff like that, um, that was going to be problematic, and I knew that that was going to waste a lot of their budget for the year. But to be honest, uh, it's um, it's not really. I'd, I would I'd be I'd be happy doing them all, you know, all category tens if I had the time and if they had the budget to do it. <laughs> 